I, I just love black Jesus mm. because I am sure that he was black. I mean, the descriptions, there. even though my, my motivation for the book of Clarence wasn't to depict Jesus as any particular color, I do believe that whatever your race, whatever your hue, you should be able to see Jesus at least once you. in your own reflection, right? Because yeah. really, what color was Jesus? Well, Jesus was the color of Jesus. Because- But he wasn't blonde hair and blue eyes. But he wasn't, but, That's exactly. That's we know, he was not from <clears throat> Sweden. It? Like, what color was Jesus? Jesus was the color of Jesus, but he was not from Sweden. He did not look like Max von Sydow. He did not look like- Bjorn Borg. Bjorn Borg, <laughs> right? <laughs> The to a ratio. Okay, though. The to a ratio. Okay, though. That might be the best question I've ever been asked. You're a phenomenal person. I mean, you legendary. I am a fan of you, my brother. James Samuel has made an awesome film called The Book of Clarence, where Lakeith Stanfield is, let's say, Jesus like. James also directed The Harder They Fall, and he's a musician called The Bullets, and he's the younger brother of Seal, who was also on this show. Let's get into it. It's the man, James Samuel, on Touré Show. So I watched The Book of Clarence twice, your second film. It's really mature and smart and interesting for a second film. Thank you. But I want to start with, you've given us a black Jesus, right? Lakeith Stanfield, as Clarence, is playing a Jesus-like figure in Jesus's time, mm -hmm. right? And it's and it, it's you're sort of doing your take on the Jesus story, mm -hmm. but you have an actual Jesus, Jesus in it, black Jesus. In it. Mm -hmm. But I I just love black Jesus mm -hmm. because I am sure that he was black. I mean, the descriptions there, even though my my motivation for the book of Clarence wasn't to depict Jesus as any particular color. I do believe that whatever your race, whatever your hue, you should be able to see Jesus at least once you. in your own reflection, right? Because yeah. really, what color was Jesus? Well, Jesus was the color of Jesus. Because- But we, he wasn't blonde hair and blue eyes. But he wasn't, but, That's exactly. what we know, he was not from <clears throat> Sweden. It? Like, what color was Jesus? Jesus was the color of Jesus but he was not from Sweden. He did not look like Max von Sydow. He did not look like- Bjorn Borg. Bjorn Borg, right? <laughs> that was not G, I mean, you know, skin the color of burnt brass and-, and But you do, an and you do an interesting conversation about faith mm -hmm. because Clarence lacks faith. Yeah. And he thinks that Jesus is doing tricks. He's yeah. a magician. He has no belief. Such, such an amazing first. moment of when he asks Mary, <clears throat> mm -hmm. how does he do the tricks? Yeah. And she's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. There must have been people at that time were like, he's a magician, right? Absolutely. Watch. My brother, in Ma Matthew 24, 5, Jesus says, many will come in my name verbatim. Well, verbatim to the English translation. Yeah, right, right, right. Jesus did not speak English. Right. Many. <laughs> Wait, he also didn't live in America. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or England. Right. 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 The Romans weren't English either. Right. Right. But he says, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And they will lead many astray. Right? He says this, Matthew 24, 5, like saying, now you could, you could take saying, I am the Christ being me and lead many astray or saying he is the Christ, Jesus and still leading many astray. The operative part of that statement is leading many astray. The Bible speaks of Simon the sorcerer, Simon the magician, who tried to pay his way into the apostles. He was doing all tricks, pretending he was the Messiah. This is documented in Jesus' time period. In his 33 years, there was two to 300 people saying that they were really? the Messiah. Really? Yeah, there was a bunch of, imagine if you have no, imagine if Jesus came around today yeah. and said, I am the Messiah. No one believe would believe me. it. That's how many people disbelieved him then. But if Jesus, this hypothetical person you said, mm -hmm. came and did something truly miraculous. In this day and age? In this day and age. Where would you see it? You'd, we, see, it on, you'd see it online. You wouldn't believe it. You'd see but, it on the but, but there's somebody there yeah. watching him walk mm -hmm. on water or do something yeah. that the people of that time would be like, 
oh, this yeah. is different. Yeah. Because, I mean, there'd be some people, there were people who believed him. There was people that believed, but they weren't en masse. You have to remember, Tori, like, if, if Jesus had 12 apostles, not 7 billion, <laughs> he had 12, and a couple hundred people that believed that, that were listening to him when he was doing his sermons on the mount, not hundreds of thousands. If there were that many believers in the Christ, they wouldn't have been able to arrest him. Mm. And the Romans would not have been able to crucify him. They would have been an absolute... But he was an actual threat to the government. If only 12 people believed, this, then we don't need to kill point. you. And, and, and the thing is, the Romans, but the Romans were crucifying all people that were saying they were the Messiah. They used to get them and go, okay, walk on water. This is historical fact. They used to bring them, okay, do one of your miracles, and then kill them, crucify them en masse. The Romans, it was the Roman Empire. They didn't want any upset so so detractors. Why do you want to do this film? Because I love biblical movies, right? Yeah, yeah. I love them from Ben Hur, The Ten, Ten Commandments, Quo yeah. uh, Vadis, Samson and Delilah, The Robe, the Greatest Story Ever Told. I love those movies. Passion With, of the Christ. Passion of the Christ. You like that? I love Passion of the Christ. Okay. I thought Passion of the Christ. It's a bit much for me. Yeah, no, watch this. I thought Passion of the Christ was an interesting telling yeah. on the film, but I do think that, that my problem with Passion of the Christ is that it really um, hammers home the fact that the Jews killed Jesus. Yeah. And that's a myth. Yeah, yeah. The Jews never killed Jesus. Yeah. They didn't They yeah. didn't kill Jesus. Yeah. Jesus has had as many detractors that were Jewish and as many supporters. He didn't, the Jews didn't kill him. The Romans arrested him. The Romans crucified him. Yeah. The Romans arrested him. The Romans jailed him. Yeah. The Romans tortured him and the Romans crucified him. Yeah. My only problem with Passion of the Christ is it may, it, even the shot composition, it kind of that is, it seems like it's hammering home the fact that the Jewish community killed Jesus. And that's one of the biggest myths on the planet. Jesus lived and died Jewish. Yeah. And so while I love th those old school biblical um, movies, I could never see myself in them. Mm. But you know, Jesus came from the hood. All those stories, they're hood stories, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, these people were poor. Right? Yeah. They weren't living in palace. They're not stories of Torrey in his palace. It was Torrey. <laughs> In what palace? Just, yeah, exactly right. It was Torrey in in. No, he was poor. In poor, yeah. right? And he cared about the poor. And he cared about the poor. All of those people were poor, right? Yeah. And so, I wanted to tell a story. I was fascinated for decades with being able to tell a story about my environment that I grew up in, but transposing it to the Bible days and showing how similar those times are to these and to show how little has, little has changed. And also just to show how be beautiful we are. Never in, in 136 years of the moving image, in 136 years of the moving image, we have never ever seen, Hollywood has never given us a movie with black people in the Bible days. It's really? Ever, in 136 years of the moving image. And you, you do that, you black in that period in a really thoughtful way. So it doesn't become a caricature's modern blackness imposed. They're not calling each other N-word. Yeah. They are, it's almost like they happen to be black and they're like living their lives, yeah. but you're not like, oh, and they're also soul brothers. Like, Yeah, no, like, because, because I mean, th those times in that period, you know, people were of a darker hue and, and you know, they lived in that, in that period. But I personally believe that beyond color, we need we need to see ourselves in that of course. in that time period. Of course. When I made the harder they fall, I want I was arguing, you know, in the making the harder they fall. I made a, a a short film, a western, They Die by Dawn, over a decade ago, with Michael K. Williams, Rosario Dawson, Ooh. Erica Badu, Ooh. Gene Carlo Esposito, Roger Guinevere Smith, Ooh. Isaiah Washington, Nate Parker, Bo Keen Woodbine. Everyone's in it, and it was like a, a proof of concept of the harder they fall. Mm -hmm. But I made that short film for black people because the majority of people I was um, debating with about black people being in the Old West was black people, right? Black people had no concept that we were actually in the, in the Old West. So when I made The Harder They Fall, all of those characters in it are real characters that really existed. Nat, Nat Love, Love, Rufus Buck, yeah. Stage Charge Mary, Jim Beckwith, Cherokee Bill, yeah. every single, um, Cathay Williams, AKA Cuffy, every, Bill Pickett, uh, every single Wiley Esco, every single character in it, every single character in it is a real is a real um, 
character because one in four cowboys was black. The name cowboy was for black people. White people were called cowhands. Hollywood just remixed everything and gave us these Wait, things. black people were cowboys. Black people were cowboys. It's, it, it's just that the name sounds so cool when Hollywood yeah. started making movies about yeah. it. Yeah, because cowhands as well. Exactly. <laughs> cowhands. Hey, cowhand. So but white people wouldn't call themselves boy. That was, mm. that was for black people. Mm. So so my, my point is uh, the majority of people I was, I was debating with were black people to the point where a couple of weeks ago, Tori, I was reading an article. I think it was, I don't have my phone on me. I think it was like the New York um, Post or something. They did an article on Bass Reeves, the legendary cowboy, the inspiration for Lone Ranger, Bass Reeves, the legendary black cowboy. They, would, they did an article on his great-grandson, right? Uh -huh. And his great-grandson said, I didn't know my ancestor was a cowboy until I watched James Samuel's They Die By Dawn. Whoa. Whoa. He didn't even know. Whoa. His own ancestor didn't even changed know. Changed his life. Changed his life until he watched my short film. I, but I love they what you're talking Dawn. about, that you are thinking about using black images to affect black people, right? It's black centric, right? And it's about speaking to black people about black people. Mm -hmm. And I and I see that in both the films, right? Yeah. In both The Heart of They Fall and The Book of Clarence, that you're talking about blackness to black people yeah. in a really powerful way. So what? it feels like there's a mission of like, I want to put a certain sort of image of black people in front of black people's eyes. Absolutely. On one hand, on one hand, Tori, there's a, uh, a big mission, you know, it's us. We're not niggas, we're gods, right? Yes, yes. Like that's who we are. Prince was telling us that his whole career in a, in a way he would he would just defy all, all boxes, right? Defy all stereotypes, defy, like he was telling us who we are and how, to, how, how we need to see ourselves, right? And so, so, the, so on one hand, there is that mission. On, on the other hand, you know, I'm a storyteller yeah. and, and I'm free. And I find that we have been constricted for so long that now that that box or those ropes are removed, we're still um, telling stories in a constricted manner. We about, are, you mean stories about trauma? Stories about... Or, or stories about like... It could be stories about trauma, but we're still telling stories in a, in a constricted manner, meaning black people have not spread their wings yet, story storytelling wise. And I spread my wings. Mm. Black people have not spread their wings. It shouldn't have been me giving the harder they fall. We should have got that a hundred years ago, right? And we didn't. Posse is not the harder they fall. Billy Zane is the bad guy mm -hmm. in Posse, right? It's still a white overseer. Buck and the preacher with with, and, I, and I love everything Mario Van Peebles, the whole Mario and the whole Van Peebles family. Buck and the Preacher with Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte is still a white overseer. Back in the day when they had those black um, westerns, a hundred, literally a hundred years ago, the Bronze Buckaroo with Herb Jeffries, the star of those movies, the black star, that, the light skinned dude that we all used to champion a hundred years ago, Herb Jeffries, he was a star of black cinema. Torre, he was white. He pretended he was black. He did not have a black um, bone in him. He, he just said, hey, they just used to think I was light-skinned, so I just started Whoa. taking a check and being in all these movies. We've never had a harder day fall before, ever. But we can spread our wings now. We can spread our wings. We've never been in the, in the Bible days. When, when I think about the harder they fall, I think about the pride that I see the characters standing with yeah and it's very inspirational yeah just they're all back. like so physically strong the women the men and everyone everyone on horseback on horseback you know um uh the character jedediah the terrible has a has a soliloquy when he's uh when they're confronted with the roman oppressor in the book of clarence yeah. and he says you know, I am of the knowledge my, that there are no oppressors, my friend. Just weak men. Mm. Weak men. Now, obviously, there's oppressors. Mm -hmm. But you're only oppressed because you're weak. Mm. Right? You're only oppressed because you're weak. And I just think that 
whatever constrictions are remain, we have to break ourselves free from them and start telling mm-hmm. stories where we're in different environments, where we're in the Bible days, where we're in a sci-fi day, yeah. space, where we're, where, where we're in the, you know, we have to, you know, we have to do that. There's an interesting journey in this picture because at first you may think that Clarence is a con man. Mm-hmm. And then you discuss, because he's kind of doing something kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of messed kinda, up. Yeah, yeah. Right? Kinda Pretending shysty. to be Jesus and straight up and down. But then he does something that shows tremendous character and selflessness. Exactly. It's almost Robin Hood of like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got the money in a shisty way. Yeah. But then I did something incredible yeah. for other people. For other people. With, and then you're like, whoa, I thought he was a clown, but exactly. he's actually exactly. epic. He's a, so go- where are we going here? Exactly. Like if Clarence is, is a, is a is a really good dude. Yeah. Right? He's a really good dude. And just like how we grew up, there's people that that they're good dudes, but they end up doing yeah. like bad things for financial gain through lack of an alternative sometimes. Yeah. Selling drugs, robbing a store. Like you sometimes people do things through through lack of a a, a, a better alternative. But not all of these people that do bad things are bad people. Right. You know what I mean? Unless, and Clarence is one of those um, guys. Like, he sees a come up when he has 30 days to pay this dude <laughs> back or he's going to die, right? The man says, before I crucify you, I'm going to get a little evil first. It's Clarence is facing crucifixion in 30 days. Where, where are you going to get that money from? Man, you better hit the streets and hustle. <laughs> and because he doesn't have faith, because he doesn't have faith and he's looking at, uh, he sees... Jesus as a, as a a trickster as a trickster right do it too he goes I could do that look could, because he wants to change his life but it takes him on a road of self discovery uh uh you know faith and and ultimate redemption all your work has been about blackness and I think also expanding the the conceptions mm. of black. so I'm interested ask everybody. What does being black mean to you and where does it show up in the work? You know, black is the name white people gave us. We are free. Black is the name white people gave us. Black people, we weren't black in Africa. We were just chilling. Yeah. We were just chilling. Then them ships came took away all our history, literally. No record of who we were before we got on those ships, renamed us and tarred us with this thing called black. We are free. We are free. I don't necessarily know, you know, black is an, think think of it this way, black is a word in the English language. Noir is a word in French language. Mm-hmm. But I, want, I really want to know who called themselves black before white people call us black. Mm-hmm. So in that theory, I don't know what black means to me, but I know what, what freedom means. But it like, means a lot to you, blackness, because it's, it's pouring out of the music, the film. Yeah. You are speaking to black people, about black people. Fully. But like I say, black people is what we've been called, right? Mm-hmm. I'm speaking to people from my continent, right? Yeah. All of us, the, the diaspora from my continent. But it's a, it's a, it's a spiritual thing, yeah. Torrey. Yeah. It's a spiritual thing. Like me and you could look at each other in a room and be like. Oh, for sure. Like it's a spiritual thing, man. For sure. I feel a, a connection Absolutely. to any black person yeah. I meet. Absolutely. There so, must be some shared. Because there is, yeah, there, yeah. there is. There was a, there's a spirituality. Um, there. And there's a spirituality with everyone, but we just been through so much. Yeah. Right? So so it's different. So when I think of the word black, that's hence I think of a word that white people gave us, right? Mm. In in the, like our colonizers and our, our oppressors. Sure. So when I think of the word black, I think of oppression. Of course, for sure. Right, I think of oppression. When I think of the word black, the word black, I think of all the things that were done to us by people that made that word. That word wasn't a word we made. When I think of my people, I don't think of a color. Okay. 
I think of a flight. I think of a flight. I think of us, when I think of my people, I think of us airborne. We can fly, man. We are not constricted. It's a myth. We are not niggers. It's a myth. Are you saying you don't like that word? No. I'm not saying I don't okay. like the word. No, because... because. But I, I'm, break, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down to you. I'll break it down. Because it's an interesting question. Needs, needs an answer. We're not niggers. We're gods. And I just prefer that word. Gods. Gods. Peace to the God. If I... Say yo, what's up, my nigga? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't. Either. I'll be like, peace, black king. You would res you would respond. Of course, but, I mean, yeah, some yeah. black people are like you can't. Oh no no, I'm not, I'm not one of the. No 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 no. Don't. I'm not. I'm not. Because I feel and I've seen a lot of. Because we we have turned love. Yeah. Be poured into that word. Yeah, we've turned Especially the word around. Older black men say to me, my nigga, and yeah. I'm like that. That's yeah. a, that's he's saying I love you. Yeah, we we turn the word around, but you know, I'm just saying like me at home, I've always. Um, Maybe even overthought things. I hate when black people talk about our ancestors as slaves, right? I hate as opposed to what should we say? I'll break it down, Tori. Our ancestors were not slaves. They were <clears throat> enslaved. The most, exactly, Black King. Saying we were slaves is the most missed. Informed, so miseducated. An, a noun on it that's what they were rather than what you did to exactly. them. Exactly. You saying what they, they were, were people literally who removes, were enslaved. totally removes, erases, and eradicates the crime. Mm. They were slaves. Mm. No, they weren't slaves. Mm. They weren't you slaves until you enslaved, you enslaved them. You enslaved them. They mm. were not slaves at any point, mm. at any point of um, slavery. You enslaved those people. Those people. We're people. And human trafficking. Ex and captured and held hostage Everything, on torture camps. Every single thing you can imagine you did to those people. But they were not. They're not slaves. slaves. My ancestors were not slaves. Your ancestors were not slaves. My ancestors were enslaved. And and and, and I, I know you're going to the Smithsonian soon. Yeah. The black, the black Smithsonian. Yeah. The first time I went and looking at the history and how early... They were organizing uh, rebellion, revolution, escape. Yeah. I mean, almost as soon as they got here, they're yeah. like, oh, fuck this. We got to get out of here. We got to get we're, out We're going to meet in the town square and figure slaves. out how do we get out of exactly. here. Exactly. Because they weren't slaves. we're not slaves. slaves. We're not slaves. We so are we... enslaved. Exactly. But we have to escape. Exactly. So, you know, I love your answer. And it, and, it, and it speaks to your work to me in a way that the music and the films, you defy uh, genre. You defy you, easy boxing. Yeah. Is the Book of Clarence a drama? Yes. Is it a comedy? Yes. Is it other? Yes. Exactly. And, 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 right? Is your music rock? Yes. But then there's J Electronica. Exactly. So it's not just rock. Yeah. It's also hip. So you, you're never like, I'm in the box. You always no. want to be yeah. because, beyond the box. Yeah, absolutely, Tori. Because, you know, like I said, we, we always, we put ourselves in these boxes. There's 7 billion people on the planet. There's only seven genres of music. That literally makes no iota of sense. It doesn't make any iota of sense. But then if you listen to uh, the Parade album, Under the Cherry Moon, Ooh. and you listen to Do You Lie, Ooh. that's a song with no genre, no no, for, no template. Well, I mean, each Prince album is like its own genre. Each Prince album is its own genre. But that particular song, there is no template for, right? There's no going down, going down, going down. And I, I don't. It's just this dude being free. And that's who I am as a creator, right? That's who I am as a creative, which is why I compose the scores for my films. And I, and you I, did all the music yeah. for Book of Clarence. And The Heart of They Fall. And The Heart of They Fall. Yeah, and I composed the entire score, wrote and produced every single song on the joint. Unless someone's rapping, I wrote and produced the entire So you song. can't write rhymes? I, I, I don't write for rappers. You let the rapper, but you can write rhymes. Nah, I'm positive. That's sit down. <laughs> but I'm James you can write, But you can write music. You can score. So and that's amazing that you're scoring your own picture. Yeah, I, I compose the score. That comes the at film. the end, like, like. Well, I write the scores. I'm writing the script. I compose the scores. I'm writing writing the script. So as I'm writing the dialogue, I listen to the dialogue. I listen to the um, melody of the dialogue, and I get my themes and motifs from there. And I start composing. So by the time I finish the script, 
I've pretty much finished the score. The script is speaking to you about what the music should be. What the music should be. So then, because I have the, the score composed, when I finish the script, my score then, even though it will change a bit with actors and different melodies that they bring, but my score then influences my camera choreography. So I already know when, what my camera's going to do. The score speaks to how you should visually approach the film. Exactly. Interesting. Which is why I've always said composers how? come onto films how? too late. Because you know, like, if I'm going to approach a scene with them in a marketplace, and I hear, ah, 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 there may be a ring at the end of that. then automatically my camera, I'll be like, okay, so the camera, there's a loop. My camera is now in a circular form. So I will swim the camera around. Because the, the music town. said that to because you. Because the music said it. That's why I've always said composers come onto film so too late. So do you see music? I see, I've always said I see music and I hear film. I see the music and I hear. Is that synesthesia? Is that a, like, is that the whole, you feel like you have the whole thing? The whole thing. The like you see thing. colors. The I mean, you literally. hear colors. I hear colors. You like do. I see, I see music in colors. But I also, like music for me is a visual medium. It's not sonic. It's a visual, it's a visual medium. And incidentally, film is like a sonic medium. Wow. To me. Wow. Film is a sonic medium and the camera tells a story. Especially with The Heart of They Fall, Especially I feel with the heart, yeah. that yeah. fluidity yeah. that you're talking about yeah. where it seems... That you have this sonic absolutely swoop through Ab it, absolutely, absolutely, and and you know you'd have scenes in uh in the book of Clarence where Clarence will be whis whistling the theme. That's you. Yeah, that or the, but the theme comes from the harder they fall. Oh wow! And the oh wow! Thing, and the way they all swim in and out of each other, Tori. Like it's just one, it's just one continuous wave. So hold on, your brother was on this show, mm -hmm. Seal. G. You know what I mean, and you know that was such an honor. I want to see. I want to see what it was like for you because mm -hmm. I remember where I was when Seal first blew up, and yeah. it was like I, I believe his first single yeah. was gigantic, and like he, he's already established as a super global superstar on the first single, a yeah. whirlwind. So for you, I was a kid right yeah how old are you in, 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 in the hood right i'm how in my old 40s are, now right how old are you i was when i when i when that happened i was like 13 or two. I, was, I, I don't know i was a kid right so what was that moment like for you because he didn't because he didn't he didn't live with you at that point right he had no, already no, he, he he had left he, he had, had left he'd, years he well no no not that long but he had left and he had kind of like just been doing his thing. you're in nigeria no, no, London. You're in London, 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 London and yeah. he went to Paris. He went to Thailand, right? He went okay. to Thailand first. Okay. Then he, then he, then he came. He went to Indonesia and then Thailand. Then he came back. He was doing his, he was doing his thing, and then he kind of became, he, he then he was just doing his music. Then his first song became like the biggest song in the UK, Killer. Boom, 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 boom. The boom, next boom. song, and then. That, so the, well, the first time was Killer and Crazy, but Killer was number one. George Michael covered Killer, if I remember rightly, like. Just after it was in the charts, it was a crazy thing. Yeah, this guy from the hood, and then and then he did a crazy, the, and, and that just went well, well. And what was that moment like for you? Like my brother is like a massive star. Yeah, like this song is everywhere. Yeah, it was like go do your thing. This, this, for me, it was like yes, he was always dope. Like I told you, he was dope. He was, I think for me, for, for what it was like for me is like what it's like for people that know me now, seeing like the harder they fall yeah. and the book of clowns. People that know me are like, yeah, I told you James was dope. I told you, I told you he was that dude. So for me, it was just like, it was almost, it was like water, right? It was like water. And also, also being, being that young, magic exists. Mm. It's a real thing. Mm. For me, I always believed in magic.
You know what I mean? Did his success make you say, I could be a musician? No. I was like, because there was always instruments in the house. So we grew, grew up. So you were always musical. Yeah, always musical, right? Just, just grew up like talking so music. Then my mom brought me a Super 8 camera when I was seven years old. She bought me a Bolex um, 16 millimeter when I was like 13. Yeah. Like I said, a Bolex and an acoustic guitar. So I was always doing both. I was just always, uh, I was always dope, Tori. <laughs> I was always dope. You always believed in yourself. No. I didn't have an ounce of belief. I had knowledge. I was always dope. I would literally sit on the, knowledge is stronger than belief, as Clarence says. Right? Mm. I didn't have an ounce of confidence. I had knowledge. You have knowledge, you don't need confidence. You have knowledge, you don't need belief. Look, I used to sit on my, my wall with my acoustic guitar and just acoustic-sized the hood. One time a man was walking past, just quickly, a man was walking past my um my wall. A white guy, long hair, he had a guitar case in his hand. And usually, he had a guitar case in his hand. And usually, people like you and me can tell what guitar it is. Whether it's a bass guitar, it's longer neck. Whether it's electric, thinner, or an acoustic, thicker bag. I couldn't tell, this thing was like a hybrid bag. And I said, what's that? What is that on your back, mate? And he looked at me and snarled. Now these times round, at this point, you know, we're troublemakers in the hood. And this is me and a bunch of people on my mom's wall on Kilburn Lane, Harrow Road, in the hood, Mozart Estate. I'm like, huh? And he looked at me and snarled. It's white dude in the hood, like, okay. And I looked at him and I was like, what are you giving me a look like that for? Before I batter you on your own instrument. <laughs> and he turned, and this guy turned around. <laughs> And this guy turned around and he went, what'd you say? You got the balls to stop. Let me tell you something, I will literally destroy you on your own instrument. Whatever you pull out of that bag, I'll destroy you on it right now. You know what this guy done? He turned around. We're friends up until today. His name's Alex, watch. This is the day we met. He turned around and went, come on then. He took his guitar off his back and undone it and it was acoustic. Oh, how I love the acoustic guitar. Because you can play, you don't need a speaker. Right, right, Electric, right. you still need your amp. A bass, right. you still need to DI. Right. Acoustic, God is your speaker. Yes. This guy, this guy I went, mean, okay, you you go first. And he said, he sat down on my, on my mom's wall. I, like, I didn't offer this man a seat. He sat down, he started playing, <laughs> playing Peggy Sue. Okay. Right. Ah, uh, Peggy Sue, not love you. Some Buddy, Buddy Holly touch. Yeah. I was like, really? That's what you're coming with? <laughs> Buddy Holly, you must really want a quick death. I love, he, I love the impromptu musical battle. In the hood. Watch this. Before he, then he gave me the guitar. Okay, you go then. I looked at it. I was like, okay, you should know something. I don't do covers. Hold that. Faisal, I sent my main, my main trooper. I said, go get me the golden fleece. My guitar I called it golden fleece. Oh, wow. The You're Gibson, how old in the story? The, I was, I was, 19, 18, 19. Okay. My guitar I called it golden fleece. The Gibson J200 12 string Montana issue. When you undo that, the, the togs, the locks of that case, you hear boom, 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 eight, one, zero. You know a bad boy guitar when it's got number, another case, boom, 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 boom. Last tug, open, lift back the purple velvet cover. You lift that tissue out of the case. You should see this guy's face. I pushed it to the side and I began playing. As I was about to sing, firstly, my playing would murder this dude. As I was about to sing my first note, Tori, I can't even remember the song because the man didn't let me sing. He went, okay, you win, you win, Aww. you win. So next time, don't judge a book by its quote unquote black cover, which is what he obviously done, right? I say, I tell that story to say, Tory, I've always been dope. I've always had knowledge of who I am. I've always had knowledge of self. I've always known peace to the gods. I've always known that I'm dope. I've always known the stories that I want to tell, no one tells them. And when you have knowledge, you don't need confidence. You know what I mean? Uh huh. I've always been James. You 
have worked a lot with one of my favorite MCs of all time, Jay Electronica. Jay Lec, man. All your whole Spotify is you with Jay Lec. You, I mean, and and this guy, he doesn't show up for just anybody. Mm -mm. To talk about working with Jay Electronica. It's a crazy thing. Me and Jay Lec met uh, in two thousand nine. Rando in London through a friend Naheem and Tony Tago. And Naheem is Yassine Bey's. Most of, yeah. Right hand, right? And Tony and, and, and me and Jay like met. And we were close. From there, we just used to kick it. And one day, I was playing acoustic guitar. I was playing my guitar. And something clicked, something switched in his brain. He's like, you were a musician, musician. We hit the studio and from then on, it was, this is like, from then on, it was just like this sync. Like he's the only person that, that I make music for. And it's like making music for myself. Mm. There's no, I don't have to think, Oh, okay, this is a Jay Electronica song. I just make a James something that moves me and it automatically moves him. Because he's a profoundly spiritual. Yeah. No, it's all in the rhymes. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Talk about monks from 2,000 years ago. Exactly. When I'm like, what? It, this, this is nothing like nothing. what anybody else is talking nothing. about. You talk about spirituality. You talk yeah. about Farrakhan. We're talking about, yeah. you know, 2,000 year old texts. Yeah. And like, yeah. He's such a. He's such a. Um, Interesting individual. One time we were in Venice and he started crying. I was like, what's up, man? He went, James, man. James. Hey, diddle, diddle. What? He went, the cat and the fiddle. What are you talking about? He went, the cow jumped over the moon, James. The little dog laughed. Ha, 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 ha. To see such a sight while tears was in his eyes. He went, and the dish... Ran, ran, ran away with the spoon. I was like, what are you talking about? Went, Look how innocent we were. Look how we used to write. But nobody writes like that no more, James. What happened to us as a people? The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog left. It's like I heard that rhyme for the first time. Mm. I was like, that's why you're Jay Electronica. Mm. Like, within him is such, um, is such, it's just this whole universe of he's obsessed with the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, and and that's what our relationship is based in, like deep, uh, a deep, profound pursuit of the innocent and the magical. And Jay Alec introduced you to, to Jay Z, Jay -Z yeah, who's yeah. Who's been produ who produced both your movies? Yeah, yeah, been my my producing partner on on um, both the Harder They Fall and the Book of Clowns. Me and Jay, Jay Z did. The music for the Great Gatsby, right? Put together that music with, along with Baz Luhrmann in 2013 or something. We we began working on the Great Gatsby, and then and then you know, but we had worked on Shiny Suit Theory and a couple other things three years earlier. So me and Jay Z have had a nonstop um, creative partnership since wow. the day we wow. met. What's it like working on music with him? It's like breathing. It's like just breath. Although sometimes it's a bit irritating because. You realize you use a pen and he, he doesn't. Use your pen. It's a crazy thing, Torre. So you're sitting there and you're both like constructing the words to something. But I ain't got my pen with me. I'm like, ah, how did that go again? He's like, it went, it just says it back. You're like, oh. So he got God. that memory like that. His memory is Have you ever seen Jay? Create yeah. like when he's when yeah. he's writing yeah. rhymes with the mumbling and the the... Mumbling, how he just sits and it's almost like you can see the words around his head. And yeah. the fascinating thing with Jay Z, to musically, is he'll construct as you know this to be true, a whole verse. Yeah, and then he'll and it's the dopest verse of the year. Yeah, and then he'll say no 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 it's not right it's not right, and he will hit erase. Yeah, and the verse will go and he'll do another one. That's like Jimi Hendrix sitting in front of you. Making, hey, Joe, where you going with that gun your head? I'm going down shooting. You go, that's in a song of the year. No, 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 it's not, it's not right. 
No, no, no. Purple Haze. Okay. Wild Purple Haze is amazing. What happened to that? I mean, they come up with double and triple entendres and the complexity all, without all a time. pen. Without a pen. But you realize that Jay does write it down. He does. In his mind. He writes it down in the air. Yeah. Like he, you see him like, you see him, it's like uh, watching a wizard. You see him reading. When, you, when he's, like, he always, he's gonna look up. Mumbling, it's blinking. Like he's writing it in the- Seeing it in the air. Yeah, and going back to the air paper. It's a bizarre, <laughs> it's a bizarrest thing. We all have our skill set. I do not have that one. No, I mean, uh, barely anybody. Oh, yeah. Barely anybody has that. And to write that uh, that complex. What do you want to do next? What else do you want to do? You know, I, I I never have, like, once. I just have things that I'm going to do, right? Okay. So, and there's things that we have to do, Tori. One, we have to go to space. We have to. You have to go to space? Yeah, not physically go to F space. Oh, filmically? I don't like heights. <laughs> <laughs> but, as a, but, as, but as a storyteller. Storyteller, we have to go to space. We, yes. we have to go to space. You want to do a black outer space. You going to be in the spaceship or you want to be on the planet? Let's put it this way. You're going to see aliens in my movie. Okay. You will actually see see the aliens. Like What, what you mean as opposed to what Jordan Peele did? Well, Jordan Peele done, a, a, I think, is a great, because it's great in scope, suggestive. You do see the alien. You see the alien. That the that is yeah, the alien. That's the alien. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, that to his, me is one of the greatest that's his, visions of an alien that's his, ever. That's his his thing. That's what and and also the suggestiveness throughout the whole movie, right? The psychological, oh uh, the psychological. It was for me. It was like John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where he wears you down with fear. Right, the fear, and what I, to me, what I saw in Jordan Peele's movie Nope, what a lot of people didn't see, is that I also saw the alien as self, right, like almost making you look inward, because there's this thing that you're at war. These two people at war with this entity, right? A lot of times in the dark, but this entity that kind of makes me look within. Like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the whole movie was an inside mm. story. It was an inside story. It was the turmoil of Richard Dreyfuss going to, even though you're dealing with this huge, alien thing but it was like a metaphor i thought for, it was really well go ahead a metaphor for what i'm saying it wasn't but for me close encounters of the third kind is a metaphor for what goes on internally internally right it, for what goes on internally. See, i love nope because i thought it was about filmmaking they're mm -hmm. making a movie yeah the alien is the difficult star who yeah. If we can get him out of his trailer, we're going to get a great film, but yeah, we yeah. don't know if we can. Yeah, so we yeah. I never got that film, though. <laughs> kind of like, you know, I mean, yeah. they, they they form a film crew. Yeah. They find a location. Yeah. Right? Daniel Kaluuya's character is the only one who can really yeah. talk to the star. Yeah. So yeah. if I, I'm going to get him out I mean, of his trailer. That's a deep and they thing. Say, get, if you get him out of his trailer, we have something. That's another way to look at it. That's what I'm saying. It's a good, it's a dope conversation piece. But when I go to space, I'll go to space and you will literally, literally see alien. Like it'll, it's, it'll be, it'll be totally different, different than, than not. Cause I know for a fact that me and Jordan Peele, us both being black, the first thing people are going to say when I, when I hit, when I hit the outer regions of the earth hemisphere, it's oh, Jordan Peele did nope. well, no, like, but, nope. but, but, but if you do an outer space picture, that's entirely different. Exactly. Than what he, he did kind of a Wild West picture when the yeah. alien comes to join them. Yeah, exactly. Do, do, right? What Jordan you go, Space done. You go into outer space. You. What, what Jordan Peele did was, for me, an inner space sure. movie. You want to do an outer space movie? Outer space movie. I have to go to outer space. I have to. I have to. Oh, you my sound, name, you sound oh, like... my name's not James Samuel. You coming, Torrey? You coming? <laughs> oh, I hell yeah. I have to go yeah. outer space. You're going to see these... 
you're going to see these Negroes. It's a challenge as a filmmaker to make outer space look real. Yeah. How do you deal with that? You face it head on. You know what I mean? You face it head on. You learn from the greats. You learn from Stanley Kubrick. Yes. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. You, yeah, you learn from Stanley Kubrick. You learn, you learn from the greats. You could just take your Stanley Kubrick handbook. So much home. of you is that you... I see. I want to say you believe in yourself mm -hmm. to an immense degree, mm -hmm. and you're like, I can conquer. And you, you like, like Mount Everest. Oh, no problem. Let's go. Mm -hmm. But you're like, I know. I, I don't believe I'm great. I know I'm great. But you, but but it's your belief in yourself that propels you. Yeah. So or, much. Or again, like my knowledge in myself, because I think that if I leave any room for doubt. I won't be able to do the things that I do even musically. I put D'Angelo and Jay-Z on the same track, mm. on the same song, D'Angelo and Jay-Z. The song's nine minutes and 33 seconds. It should be. Thank you, Tori. I mean. <laughs> Why is it nine minutes, James? Because it should be nine minutes and 33 seconds. Two giants. It's two giants. Let them talk. You gonna, you gonna listen to this joint for nine minutes and 33 seconds. Two giants. And I believe, pardon me, I believe that, 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 Ethos carries us through, like, I believe that the ethos of knowledge takes us everywhere we need to, need but to go. But knowledge, knowledge is more important than belief. What is the, what is the difference? Because I'll tell you the difference. Boxers. Mike Tyson versus Michael Spinks, right? Oh. I wonder know how many losses Michael Spinks had on his not record many, before that. Right? I don't many. think, yeah, I don't think he'd lost. There's a couple. Because he had beat, Larry Holmes. Yeah. Larry Holmes is on no, he, was, he, was, he was he was serious. He was serious. M Michael Spinks walked in that in that ring, and Tyson demolished that man in ninety one seconds. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Michael Spinks, like Trevor Burbick before him, knew he could beat. Um, I believed he could beat Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson knew he was going to be. But Mike Tyson, beat. in a situation like that. He doesn't think about you. If I do me, you're gonna die. Exactly. I don't even, it doesn't even matter who you are. I do what I do. That's called knowledge. And it's not what he done when he beat Michael Spinks. It's what he done when he turned around. Oh, when Michael's both with Trevor Burbick, when it, this is a new era in heavyweight boxing, both with Trevor Burbick and Michael Spinks. Mike Tyson turns around to Kevin Rooney his trainer mm. and shrugs his shoulders. He just does that. Yeah, no, it was this, It was always the shrug of like, this is yeah. easy. Yeah, it's Monday. Well, I mean, you know, with Tyson, the training had to be harder than the fights. Than the fights. Because right? he's crushing these people. He's crushing these people. So it was, to me, it was knowledge versus belief. I remember the Sphinx fight mm -hmm. on ABC mm -hmm. before boxing was pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. I was already a Tyson fan. I'm trying to get my dad into, he loved boxing, but yeah. I'm like, yo, this is the guy. Yeah. And the fight starts... And my dad goes, oh, I'm going to go get a Heineken in the kitchen. I'm like, no, 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 it's not. This is Mike Tyson. You can't. And, oh, and the fight was over before he came back with the beer. 91 seconds. Like, I told you, Mike can't Tyson, get up. It's Mike you Tyson. You can't get a Heineken when you're watching Mike. You can't get a Heineken. So, so my point is, to me, that's knowledge versus belief. Right? Mm. Knowledge versus belief. Like, people believe in a lot of stuff because they don't know. But right? you know. When, when it comes to myself, I know I'm dope. It's James Samuel. Like, you know, you don't believe in your skill set, Tori. You've done enough in your life to know, you know. So you put it on me. But with yourself, you've done enough in your life to know. You know who you are. You know what you do. You know what you bring to the table. You don't believe. You know, I believe what I can. I, well, go check my stats. I know I can do this. I went viral before viral was viral. Mm. Right? Mm. Not me, you. Mm. You know what you do. You know you can look someone in the eye and ask them, them hard questions. And get the answer you need mm. out of them. You don't believe in it. You know. And I don't but think I want, you believe then. I, want, I think you knew then. I want everybody to take this with them. Yeah. That it's not a don't believe yeah in yourself 
Know. Know yourself. Know what is you. And look at your life in the hood. We're warriors. Look at what we what we go through and what we can withstand. If you can withstand that, you if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Right? <laughs> I love that. Like, I love like that. if you can withstand withstand that, those every single day is just unnecessary hassle and unnecessary hustle, right? You can withstand that, you can withstand pretty much anything life life throws at you. It's, indeed. it's us. And we have that we have that knowledge knowledge yourself. I think also me liking print so much as a kid uh, just gave me that automatic that yeah knowledge and also just that automatic extra boost yeah you needed you know what I mean I could talk to you all day all day I love it congrats on the film thank you King can't wait to see the next one thank you my brother You're crushing it and soon soon we're going to space let's do it I got a question for you though Tori. This is how we're going to end this. You ready? You ready for the question? Tori, the age-old question, I think is it's a ridiculous one. It's unfair. It's unfair, Tori. But you have to give us an answer. Uh-oh. <laughs> you have to give us an answer, Tori. <laughs> and now I'm going to start answering this question, asking this question to all, like, people that I know that are muse older, that are musically inclined. I'm going to start asking it. You have to give us an answer. Not who's better. Uh oh. Not who's better. But one, there can only be one for you. Not who's better, but there can only be one for you. Michael Jackson or Prince? Well, it's Prince. Break it down. Break it down. Sorry. I mean, the, the, it's a longer career, it's a more varied career. Mm hmm. Prince is, without a doubt, more complex as far as what he's trying to do musically. He's doing everything, producing, writing, practically engineering, even though Susan Rogers in it, but he he can do that too, singing, backgrounds. He, the whole, he did, the, he made the whole song. It's just him and an engineer, 48 hours, we have another amazing song. You know, it's 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 a more... I think it's a more complex musical legacy from the weirdo Camille shit to, you know, what happens on Purple Rain, Computer Blue, Darling Nikki. You know, the guy's doing New Wave with Dirty Mind. He's doing, I don't even know what to call it, with Under the Cherry Moon. I mean, you know, it's, there's, there's so, I mean, and he said that he was the, that his best talent was lyrics. Right, that he's better at writing lyrics than singing, playing, producing. And the lyrics are quite often like, and this is not to say Michael Jackson is not. Of course, he's an extraordinary, but I think Prince is more. You have to choose a definitive Prince album for you. Oh no, you can't. You can't. You can't. You only you can't. It could because change because the variety Watch of this. what you it get from Dirty Mind so you, through the whole string to the symbol album. So you could change it, Tory. You could change it. But if you had to take one you, today, to today's do, Tory. To do what? To to listen to on a desert island, to introduce the next generation to introduce Prince. The next generation. To well, I mean, if you were going to introduce them, then you would be Purple Rain, right? And then we would expand out from there. If it was just me on a desert island, mm. it's pr I could probably live with Under the Cherry Moon. Mm. Like, I could probably listen to that a thousand times more easily than some of the others. Mm -hmm. To take nothing away from all the others. Um <coughs> You know, I would I would miss around the world in a day. Mm. I would miss the wildness of Dirty Mind. Mm. I would miss the funk of 1999. But even as I'm saying this, Prince is touching a different genre each album each and album. doing it brilliantly, right? Michael murders pop as a kid, murders disco with Off the Wall, murders pop rock with Thriller, Oh, great. I love Dangerous, mm -hmm. right? There's funk on there, right? Teddy Riley. But, I mean, come on. Prince, come on. Yep. 
the other thing I get into you, in in what the eighties. If I told you, so Prince will turn out to have been the nice, relatively normal guy, and Michael Jackson will turn out to be the weirdo. You'd be like, no, 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 way. No, no, no. He's gotta be. Look, he's gotta be the weirdo. No, it's crazy. no, no, it's crazy. No, it's a crazy thing. I appreciate that. Uh, that was an easy one. I'm, I'm Prince. I'm Prince all day long. That's all day. An easy I'm one. Prince all day. Thank you so My much. Brother. Thanks so much to James for a great interview. And thanks to you for listening. Torre Show gives you fuel to power your dreams because you can use your dreams like a rocket ship to blast you into a life you never imagined. You can make your dreams a reality. And maybe this show can help. You can find me on Instagram at Torre Show. Torre Show is written by me, Torre, and produced by Jennifer Brown. Our editor is Ryan Woodhall. And our engineer is Claire McHale. And we're distributed by DCP Entertainment. And we will be back on Wednesday with more amazing guests. Because the man can't shut us down. Yeah.